So we're going to talk about how to minister your Trix box system. In order to get to the Trix box administration page, you have to click on the switch link near the user mode status text. The default username in every Trix box installation is maint and the password is a word password all in lowercase. Once you are in administration mode, you'll be presented with a status overview of your system. Here you can see system statistics, free PBX statistics. Free PBX is the name of the web interface that Trixbox uses. So you're going to see that, that uh, mentioned a lot. Also, you can check your system uptime and server status. And also be sure the asterisks and other essential software is running okay. As you can see, using Trixbox administration mode, you can configure a huge number of options for your asterisk system without a need to memorize them all. I'm not going to cover them all, but you can get help on any single feature and option just by moving your mouse over it. And as you can see, the system is very well documented, so you can be sure that you probably are not going to get lost. Let's take a look at another important configuration option, extensions. And they're obviously one of the important ones here. So we click on extension, we'll take you to a page where you can see a list of other extensions already configured on your system and also an option to create a new one. In order to create a new extension, you have to choose what technology it will use and then click on the submit button. Here you can define a wide range of options. And as I told you before, it has a help in case you're not sure what you need to do or not. After you are done with setting all needed options, you have to click on the submit button again. Let's remember one thing here. While you're doing any changes to the web interface, you are changing that in memory, meaning in order to get them applied to asterisk configuration and reloaded, you have to click on apply configuration changes. And that's the orange ribbon in the upper part of the page. It's gonna ask you for a confirmation. If you are sure, then your changes will be applied to the asterisks. Another important option you need is to set up the trunks. Here you're going to define your VoIP provider with whom you'll be able to place calls to. As a, with extensions, the first thing you have to do is define what technology your provider is using. As usual, every option is very well documented and necessary options are placed in configuration. So this way you can be sure that you're not going to miss anything. Moreover, most of the providers have a help page on their websites. So where you can find what options you have to exactly set up your tricks box and asterisks in order to work with them. It's almost incredible how tricks box became a standard almost overnight and everybody supports it. So now we're going to create a test trunk.
once you're done setting up your trunks, you have to define how your calls will be placed to and receive from those. And this will uh, be defined in the trunks. To, th to do this, you have to set up outbound routes and inbound routes, respectively. So you have to define the route name. So we're going to use uh, route one, for example. And we're going to have to include an optional route password. And if you do, every time somebody on your Asterisk system tries to dial out through this provider, they're going to be asked for a password. The next important option is dial patterns. It defines how you and your users will access that provider and for what purposes. As you can see, we can write here any rules we want, but there are some predefined patterns that you may s save your time figuring out what and how for you to use those routes. For example, let's assume that we want to use this route for long distance calls, international calls. As you, as you can see the system, choose the correct settings for us. The last option you have to set while defining the outbound ride is what trunk we will use. So let's choose our newly created trunk. And that's all, you're done. Now every time you'll be placing international long distance calls, you'll be directed by the system to our trunk. So let's move on and configure inbound routes. So outside users can reach those who are inside. So let's give it some distinguished name. The important thing here is to match the inbound number that has been dialed. This is usually the number you get from your VoIP provider. In terms of asterisks, it's called DID or direct inward dial. After this, you have to decide what to do with your call once it reaches the system. You can set this at the set destination option. Here you can terminate the call with some number of reasons. You can connect it directly to some extension you have set up before. You can redirect the voicemail of some extension, put it in a ring group or join a conference. Putting in a ring group means that all local extensions that are members of that particular ring group will ring at the same time. It's also called the hunt group as well. After you're done, don't forget that you have to apply changes to your asterisk changes by clicking on the orange ribbon bar and choosing continue and reload. There are actually a lot of other options that you can set up and enable through the web interface. You can experiment with them freely and be sure that every option is we well documented. In addition to configuration options in, in administration mode, you can get a number of reports on system usage like who is calling whom, what was the call duration, and also some nice graphs on call distribution and other important aspects of your asterisk system.